In this video, I'm going to talk about the three types of memory that you need to know in order to be able to give your AI agents the juice that they need in order to be able to understand what it is they're talking about. Now, the three that I've identified are what I call input memory, chat memory, and vector store memory. Now, by and large, when I see other content creators talking about AI agents, they're almost always talking about chat memory or vector store memory. And so you'll hear people talking about the RAG database they set up. Well, that's probably a vector store memory. And if you can chat with it, well, that's a chat memory. But the one that I don't really ever see anybody talking about, and it's almost like they take this for granted, is input memory. This is the, the type of memory that your, bo your bot, your agent has access to that's stored somewhere else, maybe in your Google Drive, in a Google Sheet, in a Google Doc, that it's going to have access to when it's processing your command, your request to it. And so you see here, I, I have a Google Sheet set up. It's connected to a chat trigger. And what we're doing is we're just pulling from a document that I call blog topics. The sheet's blog topic input. I'm filtering for today's date, all right? And I have a, um, a bot over here. It's just, you know, tell me what this is about. I have the input for the, the chat input. What am I asking the bot? And uh, my search phrase, which is the, uh, the thing that I'm asking it about. And so here we go. We're just going to go ahead and open chat, you know, and we're going to say, what's today's blog, blog supposed to be about? I'm going to go ahead and run that. It's going to return a request real quick. And it's supposed to be about how AI agents collaborate effectively by breaking down tasks, assigning subtasks to each other. Um, all right, cool. So let's go ahead and actually go into the blog. Today is June 7th. We're gonna go into the actual sheet itself, pull it up real quick. And we're gonna come down to June 7th and how AI agents work together, task de uh, decomposition, delegation, and memory. Well, that sounds about right, doesn't it? So how they collaborate effectively by breaking down tasks, task down. So it got it right. So by having a store of information somewhere else that I'm pulling from, that acts like a form of memory. And so by having, and like, I, I think most people who build agents think, oh, well, that's just an input. Well, yeah, it's, it's an input, but it's also a store of data that the agent has access to. It's not just something that, is all, I mean, yes, it's input every single time, but it's, it allows me to set aside information and put it somewhere that's not necessarily in a vector store. It's not necessarily in the bot's chat memory. It's stored somewhere else. And so I call that input memory. And it allows your agents to have access to so much more data that you don't have to have a, a query and you know token breakdowns and, and embeddings and all that. You don't have to worry about any of that. You just hook up a Google Sheets or a Google Doc that has the information that you want. You link it directly in. That's what this uh, search topic or search phrase is. It's from the Google Sheets. So number, you know, here it is, search phrase. It allows me to be able to pull that information and have the AI act on it as if it already knows that data. Okay, so that's our first form. Let's go ahead and take this off. We're gonna come down to chat memory. Now, this chat memory, I'm just gonna use a simple memory here. You can use like Postgres memory or some other type of memory. So if I click on this, um, here, let's, we'll break this really quick and I'll show you. It has different options. You got Mongo and Motorhead, Postgres, Redis, whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use simple memory right now. Um, I do have a video on how to set up a Postgres chat memory. I'll put the link in the description below for you. But this just allows it to have basic turn over turn memory. And so if I, um, I ask it, you know, what did we just talk about? It's not gonna know, because you'll notice this bot up here did not have access to memory. There's nothing here attached to it. It wasn't hooked up here. So if I say, what did we just talk about? It's gonna go, I don't know. We haven't discussed anything yet, because there's nothing yet in the memory. But if I go and say, hi, my name is Bradford. It's gonna say, hi, Bradford. Yeah, hi, Bradford, nice to meet you. And then. If I'm gonna say, what's my name? It's gonna say, your name is Bradford. And that's because it has this chat memory node attached to it here, all right? If I take away this chat memory, boom, what's my name? It's gonna run through the AI agent once more. Doesn't have any memory. It doesn't know its name because I haven't shared it with it. So I'll try it. My name is Bradford. See, I'm sharing it right now. It's gonna say, hi, Bradford. Oh, give me more detail. What do you mean by my name is Bradford? It doesn't even know that we were talking about my name. But if I come back up here, 
I rehook it back up to this. Let's see if it will remember. What's my name? Should remember it. Your name is Bradford. So this type of memory allows it to have turnover turn or execution based memory. That way you can have a conversation with it. It's really helpful for chat bots. It's helpful for you know, personal assistant bots. Um, you'll want something a little more steady than just the simple memory, something like Postgres where your information is put into a table. That way it has access to it in case like NADN resets or you, for some reason something gets changed on the back end. Uh, this memory will reset. The simple memory resets uh, anytime NADN has any kind of hiccup. So you want something more permanent with uh, like a Postgres. All right, and then the final type of memory is the vector store memory. Now, this is another type of, we'll call it, I guess we can call it chat memory, but it's not really chat memory. You can store chat memory in here. I wouldn't, I would use the chat memory uh, tool for that. Um, but this is for, we'll call long-term storage. Um, like the human brain operates on short-term memory and long-term memory. Chat memory is like that short-term memory. It remembers you just talked about, we were just discussing this, but after so many turns, and in fact, this was set up for only five, after five turns, it doesn't know what you're talking about anymore. Like if I, if I kept talking to it, it would go, I don't know what your name is anymore, even though we were just discussing it. Whereas vector store memory is long-term memory. This is the kind of memory that you actually have to query the right thing in order to be able to pull it, just like your memory. So if I asked you how you tie your shoes, I mean, you'd actually have to think about it for a second because you'd have to like, to be able to give the instructions, you'd have to go, okay, well, you have to do this and then this and this. Whereas if I said, what's your name it, off the top of your head, you know, that's, that's, it's always there. I don't know if that's a great example, actually. What's a better, so if I told you my name is Bradford, you remember my name is Bradford because I just told you. Whereas if I, rem if I asked you what your, uh, your second grade teacher's name was, you'd have to uh, think about it for just a second. You have to go and find that, that file storage in your brain where that was stored, pull that out and be able to give me that information. Same thing with vector store memory, it's long-term memory. And so this would be found, it's a tool. It's not under memory, it's a tool. You'd attach it and then you would uh, you know, find the, the service provider that you use. I use Supabase and I have a video uh, link in the description below on how to set up Supabase. Uh, but you just set it up with your credentials. You set it up for whatever you want. I have uh, just a name, memory test, and you're working with data. You're gonna wanna set up your system prompt to make sure that it kind of knows what it's doing. So in this case, we're just saying, tell me what this is about. Um, I think I uploaded some information into this document, uh, into this, this storage here, into documents. So. Uh, it's just based on my, my documents table here. We've got some basic information here. I've got, what can I ask about really quick? Uh, testing, thumbnails for testing. Um, what, what, we'll ask about that. Thumbnails for testing. Uh, tell me what uh, you know about thumbnails for testing. So it's gonna come to the bot. It's gonna run the super best memory. It's gonna pull from that table that I just had, which I don't have much of anything in here. And it's gonna come here. Thumbnails for testing are used as part of strategies for posting bot or quick tutorial style content rather than hype. They included in end screen cards and that will actually be true. So we come here. So quick tutorial style rather than hype and screen cards, it's exactly right. So this is vector store memory will pull from long-term storage and that long-term storage in this case is held as a vector. And what a vector is, is if you remember your math class from way back in the day, or maybe your physics class, a vector is a direction and velocity, technically. Well, in this case, that's not quite what we're doing, but what it is, is it's a, you know, something like 1200, 1500 dimension graph that it's gonna put a data point for all of this information in this little block here and you know, depending on how you chunk it, it stores all that information in that little point somewhere on a graph, and then it'll store other information on another point on that you know, 1200 dimension graph. Like, like the, the human mind has a hard time conceptualizing because there's so many dimensions, but it's relational data. It's trying to figure out, based on my query, tell me about thumbnails for testing, it's able to find the information in the graph based on how close my query is to where that is found in the graph somewhere, 
all right? And so that's how a vector store ultimately works in kind of the most layman terms I can put it. And so then it'll pull that particular piece of information and it'll pull actually however many, oopsie, oopsie, I broke it, it's okay. It'll pull however many uh, pieces of information that are as close to your query position as it can find and it'll return those. So here we got four, so one, two, three, four. It then takes all that information, it blends it together based on your, your, your system prompt, well, your system prompt being your AI agent here, and based on this and your instructions to it, it'll blend all that information together to be able to return you the answer based on what you ask. And this is, this is how RAG is set up. And so in order to get it to work, you need your vector store tool, but you also need an embeddings tool. So let's go ahead and attach an embeddings tool again, since I accidentally deleted it. I'm gonna use OpenAI's embeddings, uh, text embedding three small works perfectly. And so what this tool, what this AI agent does is it takes my query, it turns it into an embedding vector number. So again, that 1200 dimension number. It'll then go to the database and pull the things that are close, as close to it that as it can, four of them, and then it returns it to the AI agent. All right, kind of complicated to simply say this is long-term memory for your AI agent. All right, so all you need is some sort of bot that you'll upload to your vector store database, and then you need the access bot that'll be able to pull it back down from it. So that's, this isn't a video on how to set any of that up. This is just a video on describing these three types of memory and when you would want to use them and how you want to use them. And I think I've accomplished that. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video. It really does help get this information out there to those who need it. Also, if you want additional helpful N8N tutorials or workflows ranging from social media posting to personal assistance or you know, marketing plan generators, report generators, all of that. You can find that all for free in my free school community. The link is in the description below. As always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.